February 13th, 1875. Readers of the Chicago Times open their papers and are met with a rather alarming headline, Burned Alive. A seeming news bulletin of a horrific and gruesome fire caused by an overturned gas burner that engulfed an unnamed Chicago theater, burning alive some 157 patrons as they fought desperately to escape the flames. Victims, many trampled to death, were pulled from the rubble as blackened corpses. Listed in the paper are the initials of numerous casualties, a custom during that time. To the casual reader skimming through the paper, the story is quite real, but a careful examination of the article's closing lines reveal that the event is simply hypothetical, a fictional account presented as reality, meant to enlighten the readership to the fire hazards present in Chicago's theater district. This piece of shock mock journalism, a public service of sorts. Chicago Times readers are, of course, equal parts disgusted and incensed. A flood of letters pour in, telling the paper off for such ill-conceived sensationalism. The Times' rival paper, the Chicago Tribune, publishes a scathing article in response, reporting that one local woman had died from the shock of seeing what she believed were her husband's initials in the article. Of course, this story is also made up. In the Tribune's half-hearted attempt to showcase how such fake news articles are in poor taste, the city's readers eventually walk away from the episode disgusted at both publications' hoaxes. Respect is lost, but so too is the message the Chicago Times had hoped the reader would walk away with, that Chicago theaters are in desperate need of safety improvements. November 23rd, 1903. The ribbon cutting for the Iroquois Theater. Located at 24 to 28 West Randolph Street, a location chosen specifically to attract women on day trips from out of town who would be more comfortable attending a theater near the police-patrolled shopping district as opposed to the more dangerous sections of Chicago under the dark of night. Thus far, the theater's grand opening has been delayed for a number of reasons, from labor disputes to architectural roadblocks. Still, the venue is illustrious, a capacity of 1,602 attendees spread throughout three impeccably adorned audience levels. The theater's single entrance, a broad and beautiful stairway that leads from the foyer to the balcony level, allows patrons of all shapes and sizes to see and be seen, regardless of the price of their ticket. An ornate, 60-foot-high ceiling held up by white marbled walls is awe-inspiring, and a glass skylight over the stage makes every performance look magical. Advertisements and playbills for the Iroquois Theater in in an effort to win safety-conscious customers, claim the building is impervious to fire. A declaration that certainly ruffles the feathers of one Chicago Fire Department captain who made an unofficial tour of the theater days before, finding numerous safety deficiencies. Exit signs are missing or obscured by thick drapes. There are no sprinklers no fire alarms, no water connections, and no backstage telephones. An editor of Fireproof Magazine who toured the building during construction noted the absence of an intake and also expresses concerns about the abundance of wood trim used in the theater's aesthetic design. By the time of the opening, the only firefighting tools on hand consist of six metal canisters containing a dry chemical product called kill fire, meant to be forcibly hurled at the base of any flames. Business is business, though, and deadlines even more so. And with the stage now ready, Iroquois Theater opens its doors. It will take only a single month for disaster to strike. December 30th, 1903. Wednesday. The theater is presenting a matinee performance of the popular Drury Lane musical, Mr. Bluebeard. The play, a burlesque of the traditional folk tale, features Dan McAvoy as Bluebeard and Eddie Foy as Sister Anne. The show has been playing at the theater since opening night, but attendance has been poor, many staying home due to the weather. But on this day, 
things are looking up. Every seat in the house has been sold, and the theater owners, eager to make up for earlier lost revenue, sell hundreds of standing room tickets for areas in the back of the theater, causing such a crowd that many sit in the theater aisles, blocking the exits. Many of the estimated 2,200 patrons attending the matinee are children. Shortly after 3 p.m., as the show is well into the second act and 16 performers are on stage delivering a rendition of Pale Moonlight, an electrical short circuit causes the main spotlight to shoot sparks into the air. One of the stage's curtains begins to burn, and wood trimming on the front of the stage catches fire. A stagehand rushes backstage to fetch the emergency metal canisters, and by the time he returns, some of the singers start to notice smoke. Kill fire is meant to be thrown at the base of flames, but the fire in the theater is taking place high above the stage. Thus, when the stagehand throws the canisters, the chemicals spill uselessly to the ground. Embers begin to fall toward the nervous singers below, and in moments, the audience realizes the emergency. The patrons panic, and show star Eddie Foy, set to go on stage, rushes out and attempts to calm the crowd. Chunks of the burning scenery fall around him as he tries in vain to maintain order in the room. There is no telephone backstage. A member of production is ordered to run from the burning theater on foot and alert the nearest firehouse. The Chicago Fire Department will not arrive in time. The fire spreads in seconds, and the audience attempts in vain to flee. The design of the theater, which includes large hung mirrors, disorients many in the crowd. Others arrive at the exits only to find locked accordion gates, set up by management to prevent patrons from sneaking to better seats after the start of the show. The audience is locked in. The Iroquois' broad and beautiful staircase proves to be a death trap. There is a reason, after all, that Chicago fire ordinances require multiple staircases and exits for the various balconies and sections. One single staircase means one single exit, and 2,200 disoriented theatergoers, desperate for air and fighting for their lives, do not form an orderly line. The theater goes black, and hundreds are trampled in the chaos. In just 20 minutes, 575 people are killed. At least 30 more will die of injuries over the following weeks. The Iroquois Theater is destroyed in what will be the worst single building fire in U.S. history, more than doubling the number of fatalities seen during the Great Chicago Fire of 1871. And the next day, theaters in New York City and around the country eliminate standing room seating. Building and fire codes will soon be reformed. Theaters all over the world will close to be retrofitted. Exit signs from this point forward will need to be clearly marked and, in many cases, installed. Theaters in Chicago will close for six weeks. Investigations will take place. In January of the next year, Will Davis, the theater's manager, is arrested and charged with criminal neglect. After a short time, he will be acquitted. Before too long, newspapers across the country report on the disaster, the victims' names published, and this time is no hoax. This time, what happened in the paper happened in Chicago. This episode of Really Weird History is sponsored by Curiosity Stream, a subscription streaming service that now offers over 2,400 documentaries and nonfiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers, including exclusive originals. If you love learning about true stories like this, you'll love their selection covering history, science, nature, technology, and more. Unlimited access starts at $2.99 a month, but you can get your first 30 days for free if you sign up at CuriosityStream. Dot com slash Austin McConnell and use the promo code Austin McConnell during the sign-up process. Curiosity Stream is available worldwide, and by trying their service out, not only do you get to watch great stuff, but you'll be supporting this channel and this series at the same time. So check it out today. 